right, Jones. How are you going to find that statue and all this junk? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, a classic point-and-click adventure game from LucasArts back in the golden age of the 90s. Now, a little bit of a thing that I got to mention here before I continue. Um, I originally intended to do... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the adventure game first, but it was terrible. <laughs> and I really, really did not want to do it. So I skipped and went straight to Fate of Atlantis, which is a much better version. Anyway, and another thing, um, you probably noticed that the, uh, for all you veterans, that the music sounds a bit different. I am using a, uh, I am using like a, uh, I, I, I don't remember what to call it, <clears throat> but, but I changed uh, through the Scum VM settings to, for the uh, original uh, uh, music, instead of a Sound Blaster, it's the Roland MT-32, which is technically in the in the old days, this was like the best sound card in the world, and that's kind of what I'm using. And and uh, and I was going to, you know, um, put in um, thinking of putting a uh, a link on how to on how to use it for you know in this game, and I uh, and I can't because technically it's not legal. <laughs> So anyway, let's get started. Some kind of funeral or Basically, this is the very beginning where you can just walk around and look it's at things. It's a stone carving of Shiva. It's a medieval gargoyle, or good imitation. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. It's a genuine candlestick. Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. <laughs> Poor Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. But anyway, looking at this thing is the way to progress. Oof. One thing I have to say is that this whole beginning thing is quite, quite silly. I mean, like, uh, like Crystal Skull type of silly. <laughs> But it's only this big game part. The rest is, is you know, what you expect from like the Indiana Jones original trilogy. The label says unidentified pot shirts. Hmm. Marcus thought potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. Looks like textiles from the Shamit collection. It's from the Shamit collection. Very sharp. Yeah, I think you kind of get the idea right about now. Now, one thing that I will mention is that um, I won't mention. I will mention this later after we've got actual proper gameplay. But um, this game has three paths, and for this playthrough, I'm going to go through all three paths. But the problem is, is that there's this glitch uh, that if you try to reload like a, like a previous save and then go a different route, it glitches up the game really, really bad to the point where it's unplayable. Because, because for some reason, some of the puzzles... I, I don't want to spoil things here. Kind of change, but don't really change it. It's odd. So basically, in order to do this 100%, I have to replay this game three times. I'll, I'll explain more in detail later on. I don't need them. They're just textbooks. I think I've read them all. 
It's an old lecture hall desk. There's nothing of importance here. There's nothing of importance here. Can we leave? The stairway is closed for repairs. Of course. <clears throat> These books don't look familiar. Uh oh. Get that roof checked. Also, as a thing, if you don't know anything about Indiana Jones or any of the uh, movies, then you really need to watch them. Temple of Doom and Crystal Skull is optional, but the real, but the real thing is Rares of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade. A cheap copy of a Siamese Idol, especially Last Crusade. Alright, the weird hijinks are over. But we can't fall through anymore. I mean, we could try falling right straight through hell, but... <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, what we need is in here. Now, it doesn't matter which one you pick because it's always going to be the wrong, the wrong one. The first two, anyway. I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Wonder what's doing in, in the boiler room of all places. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Jones. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, Indy, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith? Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. For East Place. Huh. <laughs> a game set in the 1930s where a guy with a German accent is the bad guy. Who'd have thunk it? He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What does the spy want with the Buddhist statue? I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. <laughs> yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. 
Indy, Kona found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. All right. Hello there. The show sold out, sir. But... No seats, no standing room, no exception. Well, crap. Well, there is an alternative way. We can probably sneak in through the back. Alright. It's today's paper. Okay, first thing, pick this up. Real super important. Okay. Alright. Now here's where I go into detail about the three different paths because this is actually the moment where whatever actions you decide will affect the, uh, the uh, way you go. Now, there are three different paths you can take that will eventually lead you to Atlantis, and everything after that is just a straight line. But um, what this is is that this is kind of like a uh, all a prologue before the official, you know, divergent paths happen, and th and uh, they each have their own unique puzzles, their own their own. Um, locations everything it's basically it's not going to be the same every time so so uh okay what i'm going to do is is that i'm actually going to cut it off here for right now the the video will still play but i'm going to cut off the choice I make and then the next video will be one of the paths I sh will be the one of the paths I uh, I show that that I take I show I I come back to this part again show you how to you know get to the uh, um, way to um, to open up one of the, one of the uh, paths. Now there are three paths. There's the team path, where Sophia will stay with us throughout the entire game, ne and never leave our side. And she can actually help out with some of the puzzles. Then there's the wits path, which is the longest. Basically, Indy goes about it all alone, and it has a whole lot of puzzles. And by far, I think it's my favorite out of the three. And the third and final path is the action path, or the fists path. And what this... It's the shortest out of the three, and it relies more on action than puzzles. But if you're sus suspecting, like, use of the whip or gunfights or everything, this Indy doesn't even bring his gun in this game. So... It's mainly just punching people, mainly why it's called the Fist Path. So anyway, I'm going to uh, cut it off here, and I'll resume it once I actually get into the, uh, the theater. So I will time this in about 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... All right, welcome back. Now, continuing on, if we try to go out to here, this guy will stop us. Hey, you must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. Um, I need to talk to that so-called psychic. It's Madame Sophia, to us employees, fella. Excuse me. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, 
prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. And basically, this is all important, even though it's incredibly ridiculous, but it's actually all true. And how does she know all this? Well, I guess we'll find out. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the Earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Nurab Sal? Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, what now? All right. And you can't really avoid, you know, all that uh, stuff, and because that's technically a uh, plot device that you need to uh, listen to. You can skip it, but it's part of the story. Anyway, we gotta get this guy out of here so we can get her attention, and this thing over here might help us. Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life! Don't you have any hobbies? Sure, I read. What, what if I give you something to walk away? <laughs> what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Well, it's a good thing we got that newspaper. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? Alrighty. Now, we gotta fiddle with this thing over here. And if I remember correctly, we gotta make all the lights green. If I... And I think it's left and right. Yep, that did it. Push the button, Indy. There it goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through... Uh... <laughs> May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of... of... Deceit. Deceit. Thanks, Indy. Indiana <laughs> Jones! You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack-o'-lantern. Oh, great. Good night, folks. Well, that ended disastrously. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. <laughs> That's what you get for not looking hard enough, Indy. 
Dr. Obermann. Fantastic news. We found the treasure we That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Ubermann announced the plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Not too far off. They'll never find enough uranium. Of course not. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. But... Yet you never published a word about your finds. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum. The mystery medal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Did you okay. see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab South. His spirit is close. As... Uh, Nurha what? <laughs> Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city. Shh. I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? Oh, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine myth. If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. You found this stuff in Iceland, right? Yes, near our old dig site. I thought so. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. And there we go. We're off to find Atlantis. But actually, first off, we need to find the book that will lead us to Atlantis. And start to ask some questions and probably not get weird looks. Hello. Dr. Indiana Jones, I believe, and Madame Sophia Hapgood. This is my dig site now. Go away. <laughs> okay, this was 1995. Voice acting wasn't really taken very seriously in video games <laughs> back then. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. I was. Obviously, now I'm not. Not feeling very friendly today, are we? I like solitude. It helps me think. Doctor, what do you expect to find here? The secret of Hyperborea. That's what the Greeks called Iceland, you know. You've read how they sailed north to a fog-shrouded land and how they never set foot upon it? Ha! <laughs> After traveling thousands of miles, mere fog wouldn't turn them back. Some idiots claim they've ever tailed by ghosts. Puppy cook. 
you know what actually stopped them, John? Uh, no, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. They were stopped by a force field put here by beings not of this earth. Mm, that's fascinating, Doctor. Uh, this is technically 1939. The whole alien craze hasn't picked up yet. <laughs> Why did these beings show up here? I am convinced that these travelers came to Earth to form colonies like Atlantis, using Hyperborea as a space part. Up north here, we're close to the ether. It's a perfect landing site. Have you ever heard of Plato's Lost Dialogue? Yes, there are rumors about such a book, but I've yet to see it. There are two people you might want to visit. Charles Sternhardt in Tikal, a shady fellow who claims he translated the whole thing, and Philippe Costa in the Aethos Islands. As a researcher, he's a fart, but he's a sharp traitor. So what's the link between Hyperborea and Atlantis? Right, the Yastro expedition, the one you're about to work on. Recently, I saw pieces from it, pieces that are clearly Atlantean. I see. Somebody must have been selling them. Go ahead, blame it all on me. So you completely discount the supernatural? Completely. If it's supernatural, you will. Talk to Sternhardt and Costa. So long. Good all luck, fellow right. believer. All right. Well, now we got two more leads. And I wonder just what this might be. It's an eel figurine trapped in ice. Hmm. We might have to come back here and see if he's managed to dig it up. But in the meantime... Alright. Now there's a way that we uh, have to go first. Let's head for the airport. Alright, we need to go to the Azores because that's the uh, first place we need to go. We... I, I mean, no, not here. Wrong. <laughs> I mean, I meant to call. Go to call first, and then the Azores. Because if we went to the Azores, we wouldn't make any progress. Alright. Now, we can talk to Sophia at any time, and basically it's like a thing where, um... You can get, like, hints from her about what to do next. But it's not necessary, since technically I know my way around. Hopefully. Okay. And, unfortunately, there's no other way across that we know of. And it looks like this tree might bend, but... There's a snake. It's a snake. I hate snakes. Yep. Push, push the I'm snake. I'm not fooling with that snake. Do it. I'm not fooling with that snake. Okay, okay. All right. Now we gotta get that snake off off the tree. And how do we do that? Well, with the help of a maximum hamster or a capybara. Which is right over here. It looks like a jungle rodent. And what we need to do is that we need to scare him off into this path. This path right here. All those other paths just loop around. Like if we went here. Yeah, see? Alright. Now what we need to do is that we need to get him up to that uh, forest path by moving around. And there we go, we got him on the right path. Now if we ran towards him, he won't... He'll just either run back over here or this way. So we use the whip to force him into the jungle that path. That too far away. But just, just do it, right here. There we go. Good old Mother Nature. P. 
PETA will remember that. But fuck PETA, who gives a shit? Anyway, we climbed the tree. And we made it. Wow, some bridge. Hi, Indy. Uh... Hello. Um, how? How did you get over here? While you were off bushwhacking, I found a path. <laughs> so we just killed a snake at, at Capybara for nothing. What do we do now? We better find Sternhardt. I'm pretty sure he's around. Also, there's this parrot up here. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Believe it or not, that parrot is going to come in use. Just a minute. That's my shop. Can I help you with something? Postcard? Replicas of the temple? Souvenir mugs? Uh, no thanks, Mr. Charles Sternhardt, PhD, independent thinker, researcher, and merchant. Oh, well, we found him, so I guess we can just go straight to the point. So what can you tell us about Plato's lost dialogue? I'm the one who translated it, I can tell you that. I'd worry you were here to steal my last copy, but someone called Mr. Smith beat you to it. Oh, no! <sighs> what can you tell us about Mr. Smith? He showed up last week, a tall man with a German accent and a pistol. He could have taken all my souvenirs, but he only wanted the lost dialogue. Well, Kern got the book. Shit. Well, maybe we can get some more information because that's all I can think about. What can you tell us about the temple? Glad you are. The locals claim my Indian field. Now I ask you, does this look like the work of primitive savages, or does it seem much too civilized? Can we take a look inside? How do I know that you aren't a pair of silly tourists? I only show the temple to reputable scholars. <laughs> Excuse me, bitch? I'm Dr. Indiana Jones. Is that scholarly enough? Indiana? Sounds like the name of one of your states. Or, or possibly a cat. Actually, it was the name of a dog. Sophia! <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna let us, he's not gonna let us explore unless we get some clues. I'd really like to explore the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. Uh, it's, it, the title? <laughs> okay. I don't know the title. Plato! Obviously, you're not serious about this. And believe it or not, that's actually a clue to let us know that the parrot actually knows the title. So yes, we actually have to ask the parrot what, what the title is. Title? Hermocrates, a friend of Socrates. Yep. Anyway, let's get his attention again. Stop! I'm begging your pardon. You can't go in there. The temple isn't safe. Listen. Yes? About exploring the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. The Hermocrates. That's it. That's it! Well now, perhaps I was wrong. Doing. Walk this way, please. I don't trust this guy, Indy. I know what you mean. Come on. Here we are. Let's see what you can do. Now, there's not really much we can do here. There's this spiral design that seems a little bit off. This one looks different, more deeply etched. 
Hmm. I can't. Years of tarnish have it all gummed up. Huh. Now, there is a way to, uh, remove the spiral design. However, however, if we try to, uh, go out and get the thing we need. Wait for me, old bean. He follows us. Sorry, old chum. That lamp's a part of my shop. I can't let you have that. Because we need the kerosene in order to uh, dissolve the uh, tarnish holding up the, uh, the design. And unfortunately, he's going to follow us every which way. Hold up there, friend. So... We're going to need Sophia's help with well, this. Any ideas yet? Excuse me, Sophia. What's up? Could you talk to Sternhardt and keep him occupied? Okay. Dr. Sternhardt, I'd like to speak to you. And we need to hurry. Good thing that pest Sternhardt's not around. All right. Excuse me, won't you? Let's see what your friend is up to. All right. Now we open up the lamp and use it on here. Now I know that he's going to see us do it and it doesn't really matter anyway. So, you took my lamp, eh? I hope you know what you're doing. Look, the kerosene ate away the tarnish. Remarkable. Now I got it. Marvelous. And now, we use... Looks like it could use a nose. Yes, it can. It fits perfectly. Now it looks kind of like an elephant. Amazing! Look at that! Astonishing! Bless my soul, the tomb of an Atlantean king! Here's a small stone disc with images of land and sea engraved on it. I do believe it's a world stone. At last I have the thing. Goodbye, fellow seekers. Wait! Oh no, he got away! Nuts. The thing is, is that we kind of need that world stone, but don't worry. We'll eventually get it back. But in the meantime, all we got is this. Too bad for Sternhardt. He missed the Auric Alchem Bean. Who knows, maybe it is the tomb of an Atlantean king. And that's all we can do here in T Tikal. The only thing we needed to get was the bead. Now we need to make a pit stop back at Iceland. See if he finally got that statue out of the ice because we're going to need that for a trade. Let's find the airport. That's, uh, that's not good. Too bad, he's frozen solid. A little too dedicated to his work, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't give him that. It looks like Heimdall managed to chip the eel head free. Hmm. It looks like a bead would fit in the eel's mouth. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's try it. It fits perfectly. Whoa! Look, it melted itself right out of the ice. Yep. It's a bronze coil. Hmm. And we're going to need this for a trade on the location 
of the last dialogue of Plato. Let's head for the airport. This is his house? This is it. All right. Mr. Costa? Pipe down, I'm coming. Be firm, but polite. I suppose you're selling something. If it's not a priceless artifact, I don't want it. I hear you know something about Plato's lost dialogue. Maybe so, maybe no. Who are you? I'm Indiana Jones. I'm Costa, and I'm tired of talking to you. <laughs> Indiana? What kind of stupid name is that? <laughs> nice going, Indy. I could have done better. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what are you blaming me for? I was polite. <sighs> but actually, we do need her help, because it's the only way to get Costa to trust us. Sophia? Yes? How'd we get mixed up with this screwball? The screwball in Iceland, remember? The dead screwball in Iceland, you mean? <laughs> Here, you talk to the man. My pleasure. And we're Sophia. <laughs> My necklace. Yep. Mr. Costa! Keep your shirt on! He's a touchy old bird. Watch and learn, Dr. Jones. Well, hello, beautiful. <laughs> that guy's attention. This is the one and only time we actually get to play as Sophia. Unfortunately. <laughs> Professor Costa, my name is Sophia Hapgood. Madam Sophia? A renowned psychic? I hope my friend didn't pester you too much. He's a friend of yours? Well, no, he didn't pester me that much. <laughs> nah, I think Indy's tired of that. <laughs> he just has to learn to be more tactful. You said it. He's ruder than I am. How can I help you? What can you tell us about Plato's Lost Dialogue? What do you want to know? Do you have it? Nope. Have you read it? Nope. Do you know what's in it? Not exactly. Do you can know you anything? <laughs> Sorry. Do you know where we could find it? Well now, that depends. I might trade the information for a rare Atlantean artifact, such as a certain necklace I've heard about. I'll never trade away my necklace. Well then, if that's how you feel, surprise me. Would you do business with my friend here? Madam, I'll do business with anyone. Thanks for your help. Goodbye for now. At your command, madam. Don't be a stranger now. What a charming old man trade, huh? Alright. Your turn. Yes? I think you better take over. Okay, I'll give it a try. And now, we'll trim the eel figurine. Mr. Costa? You again? What do you want? Let's talk about a trade. Okay. What you got? I'm offering this mysterious eel figurine. Now that looks interesting. You've got a deal, mister. Now listen carefully, I don't know exactly where to find it, but... The Lost Dialogue of Plato is in the Sprague collection, got that? 
I think so. The Sprague collection. Very good. Nice doing business with you. The Sprague collection? You know something, Sophia? I believe Barnett College owns the Sprague collection. All right, I need to write this down. Sprague collection. Because it's random Dr. every time. Uberman. Fantastic news. Corner, at last! See what Herr Jones has kindly provided. What on earth? Isn't it amazing? You fool! You come back to show me this, this, this prehistoric knickknack? Herr Doctor, I believe this knickknack, as you call it, comes from the lost city. Then we have failed! I see no evidence here of some magical metal plato called Orecalcum! Look here, concealed in the base is this small shiny bead. And it glitters like fire! Exactly as Plato described. It's my guess we found the treasure we see. I never guess. We must test. My God. We've done it. The energy of uranium. Without any radioactivity, and those smug American scientists know nothing. That gives me an idea. Suppose I place the bead inside the statue's open mouth. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been the Roomba. You saw that? Think of trucks powered by these beads. Think of tanks. Think of airplanes. Use your imagination, Colonel. Think big like the American. Think of bomb. Jeez, and they call us kill happy. So why are you dragging me in here? Plato's lost dialogue should be here somewhere. Need some help? You can't go with me. You don't have tenure. Fine. Rub my nose in it. I'll meet you in your office. <laughs> We're such a dick to her. It's great. Anyway. Now. The collection on where it is, is randomized, and so is its location. Now, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find, like, every single one from memory. Maybe so. Maybe I will, just in case I won't, you know, if it something says, goes up. Wanted rideshare to World's Fair. Alright, so... Let's look around the basic ways. Now, the way to find a, the spray collection is to have Indy look at everything. Like, let's look at this bookcase. I believe it's part of the old Dunlop collection. Okay, Dunlop. All right. So, so I will actually show. Okay, we're going to need this, and we're going to probably need some uh, coal. None of these are really necessary unless you want, want to... Uh... It's too slippery to walk up. Oh yeah, that's right. We uh, need to find another way over there. Alright, let's head back upstairs. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Before we do that, let's head to Indy's office because there's one thing we need. It's not really necessary, but um, maybe it is. Because we need to really check everything to see where the uh, spray collection is. Uh. Well, don't just stand there. Go find Plato's Lost Dialogue. I am. Jeez. Phew. Guess I should have cleaned it out. 
right. I guess it's mayonnaise, but it looks like used motor oil. <laughs> well, you haven't cleaned it out, so maybe the mayonnaise has turned into motor oil. But first, uh, before we make our way into the cat room from before, let's go upstairs first. Alright, let's look at this big crate. The label says, Unidentified Pot Shirts. Oh, and we can push this out of the way. Now let's look at the dusty old chest, because this is, might be one of the uh, locations on where it might be. I believe it's part of the old Ward Collection. Okay, Ward Collection, so this is net. Alright. Arrowhead. It's from the Shamit Collection. Okay, Shamit. Shamit, alright. Now, we'll use the uh, dirty rag with the arrowhead. Now, the way to get up there is that we're going to need the mayonnaise. And we're going to use it on the totem pole. And we're going to pull it. And again. And again. I can't pull it any further. Alright. And then we can just climb up it. Poor Marcus. He thought this was a okay. must. It's a crude copy of a Persian idol. This urn? It's some kind of funeral urn. I believe it's part of the old Ward collection. Okay. So anyway, this is the solution if it is actually part of the Ward collection. Looks like someone's ashes in here. Feels like there's something loose in here. A key? Oh yeah, before we leave, pick up the candlestick too. It's a genuine candlestick. Must be made out of lead. There. Uh, um. <clears throat> I think it's fine right where it is. Uh, okay. Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. I remember taking the candlestick with us, but I don't know. All right. The chest is empty. Yep. It's empty because it's not in there, because it's not part of the ward collection. But if it is, it would definitely be in there. So, down we go. And what was this called again? Wait a minute. I believe it's part of the old Dunlop collection. Dunlop collection. Now, if it was part of the Dunlop collection, the way to uh, get to it is to use the arrowhead, but we gotta wrap it up with the cloth, otherwise Indy would damage his hands. It's and we, unscrewed. And we use it on all the screws. It's unscrewed. It's unscrewed. It's unscrewed. Yes, we know, Indy. It's unscrewed. And then you just open up the bookcase. There's nothing of importance here. And there we go. That's what the solution would be if it was in this collection. I don't know if there are other collections, or maybe there were like only three. There might have been only three. And was there something that no okay I remember that we gotta climb up the coal shoe we can't go in through the briefcase bookcase up above actually I don't remember how to get up the coal it's shoe too slippery to walk up uh, well, that doesn't seem to work. No. What 
was it? I think we're missing something. In fact, I know we're missing something. Just... What, wait, wasn't there another thing back at Indy's office that was upstairs, maybe? I don't know, it's been a long time since I've played this. You gonna curse us out, Sophia? Uh... Well, don't just stand there. Yep. Go find Plato's lost dialogue. I still am. Something in the trunk, maybe? Nothing useful in here. No. Um... Nothing up here but a few broken pots. Hmm. Here's a thuggy idol. <laughs> I never noticed that before. Temple of Doom reference. Well, I guess he did get something out of Temple of Doom. <laughs> Which is kind of rare since he never brings anything back from his adventures. There's something we we have to be missing. There's nothing of importance here. There's nothing of importance here. Uh, I think I've read them all. I don't need them. They're just textbooks. Let's climb back up. I'm pretty sure we missed something. Looks like textiles from the Shamit collection. Okay. Maybe there was something up here other than the key. And I just totally missed it. It's got something to do with the candlestick. It's a genuine candlestick. I can't move it. I think it's fine right where it is. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. It's a crude copy of a Persian idol. Maybe and maybe not. Um... doesn't seem to open. <sighs> oh, oh wait, I remember, I remember now, I remember. Okay. It's here. It's an old lecture hall desk, complete with a wad of gum, I'll bet. And believe it or not... It sure is gooey. This gum is gonna ha help us get up the coal chute. It's too slippery to walk up. I think I'll stick this on my shoes for traction. What do you know? The gum works! And one of the cats must be... Another cat idol. It looks odd. I believe it's part of the old Sprague collection. Yep, this is it. Now, one of these is made out, made out of wax and not metal. It's much too heavy to carry. It's made out of wax. Yep. And, in order to, uh, now the book is in the wax cat, and to get it out, we gotta put it in the it's furnace. Fun. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a book. It's gonna burn. And I agree with you. <laughs> but, um, but it doesn't. The wax is melting. There's a manuscript inside. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. And we got it. And this book is going to help us tremendously.
I got it. I found Plato's lost dialogue. Really? Our jungle friend Sternhardt is quite the scholar. Let me see. All right. Now that I at last have, I have Plato's lost dialogue translated entirely. The Greek original is lost, so I used the Arabic text I found in an Italian monastery years ago, and always thought was a hoax. Now I wonder, could this remarkable book hold the secret to long lost Atlantis? Probably not. No one will publish it. That's certain. The fear of ridicule is too great. To be safe, I sent a copy to Sprague. Charles Sternhardt, London, 1922. In shame, I hereby do recant the time and place whereof Critias spoke. In rendering Egyptian into Greek, he made a tenfold error. Instead of lying 3,000 miles hence, Atlantis may well have been 30,000 miles away, or perhaps it was less than 300 miles from our own shores. Likewise, it may be that the Lost Kingdom had held sway as many as 100,000 years ago, or as a few as 1,000. Okay, this is super important, the tenfold error. Because that is really going to come into play later. If a kingdom arose on Earth beyond anywhere, men might travel, then we would never hear of it. Well, I accept the lesser figure. Now, we click on the uh, clip marks here, and these are basically kind of like bookmarks. Alright, so Glorious Atlantis founded two colonies, the lesser 350 miles north of the city and the greater 380 miles to the south. Gates of the kingdom opened only with the aid of special stones. Alright, now along the game, we will have to find the Sunstone, the Moonstone, and the World Stone. And unfortunately, uh, Sternhardt still has the World Stone. So we're either going to have to either find him and take it from him, or we're going to have to find an exact copy. I'm not, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. <laughs> And so, and, th and these are randomized as well with each game. It's never going to be the same solution. Like, at May Outpost, the Sunstone suffice, the darkness concealed the tall horns, okay? That's really easy. At the Greater Colony, a Moonstone was also needed, with the sun dying as a new moon is born. To approach the lance itself, a world stone was required as well, with darkest night soon to rule the western sea. Final entrance yielded only to contrary minds. Alright, the final entrance is basically also another randomized thing because at some point when you finally get to Atlantis, there's a um, a place that shows you the solution to finally get to the final entrance. And it is said that dwellers in Atlantis had no horses nor any need of them. Or a calcum, the metal that glittered like fire, this they had instead. They cast it into shiny beads and used them as we do. Minted coins, paint statues to do their work as if by magic. When their colonies were failing, wise men carved strange devices out of amber to search for the metal. But only proud Atlantis ever yielded a supply. Socrates, you have called the kingdom wealthy, but surely this is absurd. As the waters rose around their city, the kings of Atlantis, one after another, sought to hold off fate. Knowing mortal men would never rule the sea, they planned a huge colossus, which by use of orichalcum, ten bees at a time, would make them like the gods themselves. Nur Epsel was one such king. He it was, say, the wise men of Egypt who first put men the colossus, making many freaks of nature at times when the celestial spheres were well aligned. This I doubt we are hearing a child's tale. Even Socrates doesn't believe in this shit. <laughs> okay. Now, this is going to be randomized. I mean, now what I'm going to do is that I know this is kind of like the uh, prologue video, but I'm going to use this with these solutions as the, uh, as the team path. But however, when I start the Wits Path and the Fist Path, these three are going to be different. So, so, so eventually when I, when I do that, I'm going to have to come back to this 
and read what the solution is for each new uh, different colonies or outposts. I don't see how this will help us find Atlantis. Didn't you notice Plato's tenfold numbering error? So he got his dates mixed up. Why is that so important? It's super important. Plato's error means distances could also be wrong. So what if they are? If Plato is right, Atlantis is in the Mediterranean. You mean 300 miles from Greece instead of 3,000? Yes, the cradle of civilization. You could be right. He once told me he came from the middle of the world. That's what Mediterranean means. Good old Nurab Sal. I'm starting to like him. Wait, quiet. I think I'm getting something. So, Mr. Sal, what's the secret? <laughs> Be patient, he's lost. But I think I know how to guide him home. Among the artifacts that Kerner stole was a small stone disc with a hole in it. I'm sure it was one of the three stones mentioned in Plato's book. And I didn't find it. I bought it from Alain Trottier in Monte Carlo. Why should he help us? Or was it Omar Al-Jabbar in Algiers? Either way, Algiers or Monte Carlo. This much I do know. We need all three stones if we want to find Atlantis. How will I find Trottier and Al-Jabbar? Not so fast. First, I'm going to tell you a fortune. Uh, okay. This is where I'm going to have to cut it off because the fortune is actually tied to what path we're going to go. So, this is basically it for the, um, for the, uh, prologue video and I will put links in the description box showing off the different paths you can do this in like in a in any order in what and whatever it, it won't it won't matter you can pick any path you want but for right now I'm just doing the uh, the uh, the team path so if you're watching this this video just after its release you're gonna have to wait until I eventually do fists and and Wits Path uh, the next day, and Ad Atlantis is probably gonna be like um, okay. So this is day one, so so I will be doing Prologue and Team Path. Then day two I will do Wits. Day three I will do Fists, and day four I will do Atlantis. So so yeah. So if you're watching this, you know, much, much later than the uh, date on when this video is published, then you can choose whenever. But for right now, I guess you're just stuck with the team path for now. So anyway, I will continue this in whatever path you choose, and I will see you later.